When we talk crown molding, we're really focusing on three areas. This outside corner here, mm -hmm. this inside corner, and then of course the straight run. And the straight run. The straight run you have to deal with a situation when you have a molding that won't reach the inside corner of this side and that side. You have to add to the length. And that's called a scarf joint. Okay, so how do we make that joint? Well, let me show you. The most important thing that you have to know is holding the molding in the right orientation with the wall and the ceiling. And you have to hold it in that same orientation in all three cuts. Okay. The next thing you have to know is you're going to tip this molding upside down. And you're going to treat the fence of the saw as the wall and the bed of the saw as the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you hold it tight to both. Okay, right? so that's been inverted. Right. Now, I'm simply going to slide the molding over and I'm going to make my first cut. Okay, so the All first right. cut has been made. Right, now I'm going to make a sister cut. Holding it tight against the, fall, the wall and the plate. All right. Now we have, just hold it tight and bring it together. We have a oh, scarf joint. Nice fit, Tommy. Let's step it up a notch here. The outside corner. Now this is a little less forgiving. Ah, the outside corner. Again, a nice tight miter. Should be tight like the bow of a ship. Let me show you how to make that one. My saw is set at 45 degrees to the left. Okay. Simply hold the molding tight against the fence. The orientation is key. Make my first cut. All right. All right, now you hold that one. Okay. Now I'm going to make my second cut, but I have to turn the saw to 45 degrees to make the sister cut. So 45 in the opposing direction. Correct. Holding it tight. Push down. Make my okay. cut. Let's see how you did. And there you have an outside corner. Nice tight cut, Tommy. Well done. All right, I think you're ready for an inside corner. Okay. This requires two different cuts. First, a butt cut, and the second is an inside miter. Now watch. They don't fit. What I have to do is I have to remove all of the wood in back of the leading edge, and that's called a cope cut. Let me show you how to do that. All right. Now the first thing I've done is I've I've darkened the leading edge with a pencil so I can follow it. And I'm going to cut that with this coping saw right here. Thin blade will curve right around to follow it. Now, hold it in the right orientation, holding the saw level with the, with the floor, and I want to tilt it back slightly. So now I just follow that leading edge. Because the blade is so thin, it can follow along the curve and even turn tight angles. So it's just the leading edge that matters? Yep. That's all you're going to see. The idea is to remove the wood behind the line so the two pieces of molding can meet. But I want to make sure to leave the line. Now, before I install this molding, I'll need to smooth out the rough edges with some fine grit sandpaper. But for now, the hard part is done. That's the basic idea behind an inside coat.